Welcome back, everyone. Grab a cup. Let's sit and crochet. How are you guys doing <laughs> today I have got every now and then I like to mix a packet of cocoa mix into my coffee and I know I've heard from some of you guys that you guys like that also so it's just a little special treat for me today so today is very relaxed just grab your crochet or your knitting and we're just going to sit back and have a little chat and crochet together. Oh, that's so good. It is sweet, but it is good. Today I am working on the cowl that was started on crochet creations by Christy on her channel it was started on Saturday morning this is the new make along that she was doing with everyone on her live and this first yarn is one from Kramer yarns it was in their mystery box and I don't even know what it is but it's like a boucle however it does have some wool in it and then and it is definitely a five slash six and to, I'm holding it together with these two so I'm holding these two together and I don't even know what these are I'm pretty sure they both have alpaca in them because they have the hairy alpaca coming off so they're an acrylic and alpaca mix, but I don't know. They're, I think they're yarn bee from Hobby Lobby, but I don't have any clue as to what they are. I don't have labels for them anymore. And the stitch is very easy. You're going to go into the single crochet from the row below and do a single crochet, do a chain one, and do two double crochets into that same stitch and so it's a cluster stitch and you do that all the way around and then you chain two and turn and you do it again going the other way you, you slip stitch to join you know okay so what are we going to talk about you guys let me turn my chair just a little bit I feel like I'm kind of off center. That's better. I know that a lot of people had asked me through the last two or three years, because I live in the country, that they wanted to know what it was like. And so I thought we would talk a little bit about that. Uh, I do live in the country. I live five miles west of town. So I live on the farm, the family farm with Mr. Fiber. And it is his family's farm. It is not what you would call a working farm anymore because we don't work the land. We do have cattle but we don't work the land, okay? So we don't have a tractor that we plow the field and 
plant wheat or anything like that. We live in West Texas and I've had some question, someone has questioned me about whether I actually live in West Texas or not. And I tell people that I live five miles west of west of town and okay I live five miles west of town the town only has about 800 people in the entire little city and that city is in a county which holds no more than 4,000 people in the entire county so pre pretty small and the county sits in West Texas. And I always tell people that I lie, that the farm lies halfway between Wichita Falls and Abilene, which is true. However, we are west of that line. So if you're looking at Abilene and you look straight up to Wichita Falls, yes, we would be at the halfway, but we're actually west of that. So we are closer into West Texas than we are into Central or North Texas. So it gives you a little better idea. <laughs> I talked about this the other day and I wanted to be sure that I clarified that. Okay, so. I am being five miles from town is not bad at all. We do have a grocery store. It's called Lawrence Brothers. It is an IGA store. If anyone knows the IGA grocery stores, that's what it is. And if you hear something, my refrigerator, it's either my refrigerator or it might be my, my Keurig because I just made myself some coffee. Nobody's moaning. <laughs> nobody in his house is moaning not even the dog even though he's been fed and he has gone for a little run that I would rather he had not gone on if I didn't tell you and it's your first time here my name is Jill and it's nice to meet you and I'm really happy to have you all here so we have a ga let's see, we have two gas stations. We have an Allsup's, and then we have a locally owned gas station. It's called Pinman's, and it's a, I believe they're still a Conoco. And then we have a dollar store. So we have one that we have a, a dollar general. The grocery store, post office. We do have a little hospital here in town and a clinic and a pharmacy. We have a care home, retirement center, old folks home, whatever y'all want to call it. Let's see, what else do we have? We have an Ace Hardware. We have one little restaurant which opens whenever they feel like it. We have another one that is open. It's a little Mexican restaurant that's been open for several years now. It's a great little restaurant, but they're having a hard time finding any help. So they've been open a lot less than they were before. There is a beauty shop just one and just one girl and she recently purchased that beauty shop from someone else and it's got tanning booths and stuff in it so anyway um, let me see how long we've been going okay now we're going to chain two and turn and go back the other way. Oh. Right 
here. I'm trying to get into a rhythm with this. And that's, I mean, we, we just don't have a whole lot here in town. Now, Mr. Fiber works in a town that is probably, well, he said it's a solid 45 minutes from here at our house to where he works. One, one way, 45 minutes. So what is it like to live here? Well, it's quiet. We have a lot of wildlife. We have all kinds of things from skunks to snakes, rattlesnakes, water, not water snakes. Um, we have a couple water snakes. When it's full, it's, we have, when our tank is full, we have water snakes. We have armadillo, porcupines. Y'all don't even want to know what that was like when our dog, our dog that the one that the older female dog I had that I had to put down last year, uh, she got a hold of that porcupine twice. First time she was fairly young. The second time she was older and for some reason Mr. Fiber feels like she might have thought that it was something else and she just went after it and it was too late. Way too late and it got her. And I'll tell you what, we wound up giving her Benadryl to calm her nerves and laying her down and then Mr. Fiber pulling each and every one of those tines out with pliers. We just had a bowl and he just pulled them out. What a day. That was a rough day for everybody, especially her. So porcupines, skunks, um, possum. We have lots of possum. We have fox. We've had a mountain lion. We've had sphinx. Sphinx are more common here than the mountain lions are. I came home one day when when I first moved in. Um, I hadn't been here for but just for a few months, and we had a couple of cats, and I had food put out. There's one old tom that I was feeding, and he was not was not a lovey-dovey guy. He he would come around and he would I mean, he would. He would he would let you pet him and stuff, but he just wasn't he 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 had stuff to do, you know. And I was feeding him over by the side of the house. Well, I pulled up after coming home from work and I saw this cat that was walking away from that bowl. And it went back and back behind the house. And I got to thinking, you know, that was a very big cat. And I was right. It was a big cat. It was a sphinx. And because after I went in to tell Mr. Fiber about it, and he said, oh, you saw a sphinx. Not a sphinx. A lynx. And then the dog I was talking about a minute ago, our old, she was a great Pyrenees golden lab. They call them a golden Pyrenees. And they're wonderful. If you ever have a chance to get one of those, you will not regret it. They're wonderful dogs. Absolutely wonderful. She was so smart. And she had one. No, it was a mountain lion. She got the mountain lion trapped in a tree down in the gravel pit and we were like let's go you do not need to be tangling with that guy she was so brave though I've never met a tougher dog in all my life she was tough 
That dog was tough. I saw her pull in two by fours, old two by fours out of the, out of the cellar. We have a cellar. It's, a, it's, I showed you guys in one of my videos recently and she was pulling two by fours out to get in there to get to a skunk. She hated skunks. She hated skunks and she hated, uh, oh, what's the other one? I always forget what it's called. I'll think of it. They're cute things. But when she was little, they used to come and eat her food. It used to make her so mad. Oh. What's that thing called? Shoot. Don't you hate it when you can't think of words? So... We have a lot of wildlife out here. We we have cardinals. We get bluebirds, blue jays. We get <laughs> we get uh, we kind of gauge the, what the weather is going to do when spring's coming, when fall's coming, and things like that, based on the animals a lot because that is a good gauge for us as to when things are happening. For instance. A lot of times, our cats, if there's going to be a cold spell, our cats will eat a lot in one week. And I'll have to fill their... They have a, a self-feeder out there, and they I have to fill it up twice in one week because they're just going through the food, getting ready for cold spell. Sometimes with other weather changes, but the heat, they just don't eat as much. So not with heat. Maybe with storms every now and then they might do it, but mostly in the wintertime. They will eat like crazy. Or if we're feeding a couple, two or three mamas that have babies, then we go through it. And if we go through, and Mr. Fiber has put their container, their, their self feeder up on a post. So anything that is bigger than the cats is probably not going to get up there and eat out of it. The birds sometimes do, but the possums, the skunks and stuff like that, they're not in it quite as much as what they used to be when all the food was down low. Now the dog food's down low. So I catch them in the dog food sometimes. So I keep a self-feeder out there for Duke because he stays outside. Cerberus stays in the house, but Duke is the outside guy. And so he gets a self-feeder out there. He gets to come in and eat too, but he has a self-feeder. And the the springtime, we kind of know when there'll be a mockingbird. Others call it mocking, mocking jay or mockingbird. We, we get those in the spring, but we really know that spring is here and there's no more cold weather when we get the scissor tails. Now the scissor tails are fair weather birds. <laughs> And they have two really long feathers that come off and they kind of scissor out off of their tail. And they, so they're, they're scissor tail. And what other, we get lots of little birds that I really just don't know a whole lot about what they are. We get, you know, the little finches and the little, oh, what are they called? I think they're a titmouse or something like that. Um, we have dove. We have lots of dove here. 
and we live fair there is a hunting place here and actually I should talk about that too because the hunting place out here is they actually have their own podcast they have a audio podcast and there have been some famous people come and hunt out here if I remember, I'll put the information for them down below. And if you really want to know, you can comment or send me a message or email me or something. Anything that I talk about and you guys want to know, just email me or leave me a comment. But they, they've had, what's, two or, two or three famous, um, singers come out here and and hunt and then we also have a guy here that does the helicopter hunting so they are hunting for the wild hogs and um he'll take people up in his helicopter and they pay upwards of ten thousand dollars to go hang out of a helicopter and shoot hogs Now, I'm not real crazy about him flying over our farm. They don't shoot them on our farm. We don't allow that. We we tried that. We gave access to someone, and that didn't work out so well. We were not crazy about how all that went, so we're not doing that anymore. We don't hunt here. We have, we have deer. So anything that comes through here, they have access to on other people's property. And they do go onto other people's property and and shoot from their helicopters. So they come like right over us when they're doing that. It drives me crazy. But I'm also okay with it because they're killing hogs. And we sure don't want the hogs. So you kind of have to take the good with the bad on that one. So I go to either, I go to town most of the time to get my groceries. I go to the dollar store and get, get stuff all the time. I go to, I can go one town over where Mr. Fiber works to that there's a grocery, nice couple, two grocery stores over there. There's a local, localish one there. And there's a spring market over there also. And I like shopping at the spring market. The last big groceries hauls that I have gotten, I've gone to Aldi. And that's in Abilene. So that's 70 minutes away to go to do that. And I have the cooler bags and all that stuff so it works out fine and I like going there because it is cheaper but right now everything's expensive I'm not really seeing a discount or a deal anywhere on anything it's just ugh, it's pretty bad I'm not sh seeing the shortages empty shelves and things like like some people are but maybe that's where we live and we just, maybe we don't get all that stuff because that's, that's something about living here and that is things that you might get other places, we don't get. We just don't, it just doesn't get here. So I, there's a lot of stuff that I don't know anything about. Don't even know it exists because we don't see it in our stores doesn't make it all the way out here to the end of the line <laughs> and I swear it's the end of the line at our grocery store because it feels like we don't get you know the stuff that we get is like okay just send it out there because you know nobody else is want, wants it you know I don't know if that's really what they do or not it's just what it feels like I'm obviously not starving And if I get to 
when I go to town, I usually do as much as I can while I'm in town. So say I go to, especially if I go to like Wichita Falls, I will go to Tuesday morning and I'll go to Hobby Lobby and Michael's and um, Target. I'll go to Office Depot or Big Lots. Now, I don't go to all those places every time, but those are some of the places that I do go to when I'm in town. Dollar Tree. They have all of those there. Plus, they have food. They have different restaurants there. Than some of my favorites are now closed. A lot of times when I go to Wichita Falls, I go to have fa so good we have a fa corner there in wichita falls and i go have fa with with carrie my youngest daughter so yeah i you know we're limited and when i first moved out here it was like what i can't get what okay wait there's nothing here how am i supposed to cook how am I supposed to do anything when there's nothing here? And I just was flabbergasted at how little there is and how people even here, knowing that they could go to Abilene or Wichita Falls or even over to, and most people do go over to Haskell to go to uh, Modern Way. It's like, you know what? I just don't understand that. I, I can't believe that we don't have anything here. And at the time I moved here, we didn't even have a Dollar General. So that's a newer addition that really has made a difference for us to have. And now, one town away, we have a family Dollar Tree. So this is one of those new stores that is combined. You have the family dollar and the Dollar Tree together. And that's a nice store. I need to take a video when I, and go in there sometime and show y'all. But it's a really nice store. We were over there the other day, Mr. Fiber and I. So I can't just like run down to the corner if I need something for a recipe or I've run out of something or I just there's something I want. You know, maybe you just... Let's go eat tonight. Well, Mr. Fiber and I, the other day, we wanted to go eat. Well, it was on Sunday. Nothing was open. Nothing around us was open. It was hard to find anything to go to. We had to go over to Monday, which is like 12 minutes from the edge of town. Which So we go five miles and then to get to the edge of town, it's 12 miles over to Monday. And we went over there and we had um, a meal over there and it was really, really good. I had a, what do you call it, hamburger steak. So it had Texas toast and a hamburger with grilled onions and Swiss cheese and then they put what they called their special sauce and I got it with french fries and I'm like "Ooh, that sauce is really good just a touch of heat to it and I said something I said you all you ought to say, um, serve that special sauce on the side and she says we do well now that I know that the next time I go and I get french fries I'm gonna ask for special sauce her daughter makes it so it's, you know, you just, we just don't have as much around us. That's one of the things. The other thing is, living out here, we don't have services like other places do. I mean, it's, it's a really good thing that, that Mr. Fiber is so handy because he does all the repairs here. If our car needs to be fixed, he fixes it. If our 
plumbing needs to be fixed, he fixes it. If our electrical needs to be fixed, he fixes it. Plus, he's working. We, we do have a plumber in town, but, you know, that's expensive. Um, there is a guy that sells appliances over at Monday where we went to eat over there in that little town. And they're pretty good about, if, especially if you buy an appliance from them, they're real good to come out and replace things, parts, and stuff like that. So that's just... It's just how it is here. You're like, okay, well, let's let's go buy it over at Monday. That way that he can come and fix it if it needs to be fixed, you know? Because nobody else is going to drive an hour to come help us. Although, again, Mr. Fiber fixes just about everything anyway. But, you know, it's just, you just don't have the services. You don't have the stuff. So that's kind of hard. We We live on septic. Okay, we had to stop for a second because Cerberus is on B patrol today. What you doing over there? What you doing? So since we had the fireplaces, that's another thing about living out here. Uh, this house is an old farmhouse. So... We don't have central heat and central air. For heat, we use the wood-burning stoves and electric heaters. So we have one of those that's like a, it's not one of those, I call it a radiator. It's a, you can push it around, it's on wheels, and it's electric, but it, it has oil inside of it, and it looks like a radiator. The metal radiators. We have one of those in the bathroom and then I have a heater in here and there's a heater in the back laundry room. There's one in Mr. Fiber's room, the man cave. There's one in the kitchen. There's one in the living room. We don't, we don't really have a whole lot of heat going in the front of the house because we like it cold when we're sleeping so yeah but since the flues were still open from burning the fire the wood in the fireplaces the bees came in today because we got up to I want to say we got up to about 65 today so of course the sun was out it warmed up and the bees came out and they came down the flues and then in here <laughs> he, he was he was snapping at them he snap <laughs> i think okay i said the, i think he killed 3 and he ate 2 he does not like bees and he's not afraid of them at all so that's another thing about living out here in the country is, you know, the, we don't, like I said, we don't have central heat and air. We have a septic and we have a well. Now our water pump is electric. So if we lose electricity, we have no way to get the water to the house because it is all electric so we keep water at the house so we can flush the toilet or we we go outside if we have to no big deal that doesn't bother me anymore um but you know for drinking water for cooking and that kind of thing you know just whatever we got to do the wood for burning stoves What's nice about that is that if I really wanted to, and I've done this before, I can boil the water in the kettles and use that to cook. So, and I have done that. So we're not like, 
I don't want to make it sound like we are super, super remote because we're not. I mean, we have amenities around us. This is how it's looking. I like it. I'm not sure how much more I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and do that other color again. And then what else? Dirt road. That was another thing. Those of you that have lived on a dirt road are going to know exactly what I mean when I, when I just, I just have to say dirt road and you're like, uh-huh. You get waffle board on a dirt road. So I first of all want to tell y'all, I am not complaining one bit about living in the country. I love living where I live. Don't get me wrong. I'm just talking about all the different ways that living in the country is different than living where there's more population. That's all. I love, I love living out here. It gets on your nerves sometimes. I get tired sometimes of the, the dirt, the constant, like, just dirt everywhere. <laughs> I'm ready for some, you know, water or just something different, <laughs> different change of scenery. But I get that because when I go to my dad's or I go to, to Chelsea's or any of those things, I get to, ooh, the fuzz. I get to see different things. And it's really pretty out here when it's, it's ugly right now because it's just dry. It's just so dry. And West Texas is typically a dry place and we have lots of wind. But when, um, when everything is green out here, it is just so pretty. And I have a playlist here, a walk with me playlist. If you guys wanted to see it, you could go and see. I have some there. You can see what it looks like out here when it's snowing. You can see what it looks like when it's, um, when our tank is full. Cerberus scratching. He was flat out asleep a second ago. So. So yeah, it's, um, it is so quiet out here though. I'm telling you guys, there is no, we can hear the trucks, you know, on the highway up. It, we're probably about a mile to mile and a half from the highway and we can hear trucks and stuff on the highway. And depending on which way the wind's blowing, I was outside one time and I heard voices and I'm thinking, who's here? Because I could hear voices. I had no idea where they were, though. But it sounded like they were in my yard. Well, the wind was blowing a certain direction and we had hunters. And the hunters were out on the property across the dirt road on the other side of the dirt road. But the wind was blowing in such the direction towards me to where I could hear exactly what they were saying. They were standing over there at a gate and they were closing the gate and they were just, you know, talking about, well, yeah, we got to close the gate. You know, I was like, wow, that's like they were just right next to me. So weird. Good thing I know that, though. <laughs> Somebody was over there and they're listening. If I said something, they might hear it, too. <laughs> wide open spaces, right? <laughs> and I love it. And we do have, okay, our, our animals. Cerberus is my emotional support dog. And so he stays in the house and he is a border pit. So he is mostly pit bull mixed with border collie. 
So his coloring and a little bit of his personality comes from the border collie, but he's almost nearly all pit. And the thing I love about him is that he's just always so happy. He's happy even when I get on to him, which he hardly ever takes badly. <laughs> he really, I mean, he knows I'm when I'm disappointed in him. And it lasts for a little while, but not long. He's just always happy. And then Duke is our Great Pyrenees mix. So he's mostly Great Pyrenees. And then he has like a little bit of lab in him. And I'm not really sure. I've always wanted to kind of do the DNA test on him because I kind of wonder if he has some husky in him. Because the water just rolls right off of him. And that's, that's how huskies are, so I don't know. But he stays outside. Now, he comes inside when it's really cold. He comes inside when it's really hot. And the rest of the time, he really doesn't want to come in the house. But he, he comes in, like, once or twice a week. And I will feed him when I feed Cerberus because, um, you know, Eating in the house is the special stuff, right? <laughs> and so he stays outside all the time. And his, but his, that's his job. His job is is out there, and he really hates coyotes. So he spends a lot of time barking at the coyotes. He spends some time barking at the cows and the horses too, which they mostly ignore him. So we have. We have two horses and a donkey. The horses are not broken, but that's okay. I like I like them. They're sweet. They'll eat out of your hand. They'll let you pet them. Well, one of them lets you pet her. The other one, the uh, red is a one of those rescues. He came from. Um, what do they call it? You know, off the prairies, they have the Mustangs. He's a, he's a Mustang and he's got one of those tattoos on his neck from, from the rescue, the Mustang rescue place. And then Rose is a, uh, mostly Arabian. You may be hearing Cerberus snore now. And and then Toby is the donkey. And we've had him, gosh, I don't even know. We, Mr. Fiber and I have been together for 16 years, and we've had him probably 15 of that. But they live a long time, donkeys do. And then we have, six, at last count, I think we have 16 head of cattle. A mixture of bull calves and bulls and cows and um, you know female calves male calves the male calves I call them bull calves so you know I think they're called heifers <laughs> I think the girls are heifers Anyway, we've got quite a mix of those, and we're, this year we really need to take some and get them, um, either take them to market and, and sell them, or we need to put some in the, in the freezer. There's a couple of them need to go to freezer camp. And there's we're, we're, ha we're getting uh, too many bulls, so... They're going to have to go to. And then we have lots of cats around. We have, we're, we're supplying West Texas with black cats right now. We have one ginger that came from town and he is neutered. But for the most part, he's the one in charge around here. And I can't believe that he is in charge but he is most of the time and then we have one K 
cat that is a Siamese mix and the rest are all black. So I'm hoping when Mama, Mocha Mama, I call her, um, I named her Mocha Latte. She's the Siamese. Beautiful. You've seen pictures of her beautiful blue eyes, but I'm hoping that she has a mixture this next time when she has kittens. That way we can get another mix in here of all the kids. I really wish that the ginger wasn't fixed, but because that would be pretty to have some of, some of his, but oh well. He's the one. That's Mauser. He, you've seen him in all my videos where he's always watching me when I go for my walks and all that stuff. He's always right there when I come back to the house. So that's all the the animals out here. Trying to think of anything else you guys might want to know. Our tank, which is our pond, it is spring fed. We have a spring out here. However, it's been recently, like the last two, three years, that the spring has not been running hard enough to fill up our pond. I'm hoping it does again. We've been through a drought and some dry spells. Not exactly droughts, but dry spells. So that the pond didn't exactly get filled up. And then when the guys start irrigating, that causes it to go down again. And then it takes it a while to get back up. So maybe it'll fill up again. We, if we get a hard enough rain and we get enough runoff, it fills up and it stays full and it'll actually run over because the spring will run with the with the ground water coming up the spring will run enough to go down into the pond but we haven't had that for a couple years so maybe but we're we're really happy that when when we had the the ice and stuff last year that we went down to check on the, you know, we're worried about the cattle having enough water. Well, the spring did not freeze. So that's where they get their water. They go to the spring and drink, and then they go off and eat. And so we're very fortunate that that was the case because we didn't have to go and get water out for the cattle. So... Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> In the summertime, we don't have central air, so we have window units. Mr. Fiber puts the window units. Now, here in the she shed, I le he leaves them in because they're kind of built in. In a way, he's built in around them to keep them stable and to keep better uh, cooling for in here. So they stay in, but in the rest of the house, he takes the air conditioners out in the winter time and seals up so that it's the draft doesn't come in. And then in the summertime, he puts them back in. So that's another thing we do out here. And what else? I hope that gave you guys enough time to finish a project. I almost nearly finished mine. It's come along. I'm going to keep going here. I'm going to go ahead and, and cut this off because I've got some other things I've got to do. But here's how mine is turning out. I'll try to remember to leave a link to the to the live where you can go and see how to, how to do this on, on Christy's channel. And you guys, have fun today. If you have any other questions about how we do things out here in the country, what it's like for us out here, uh, just send me a comment. Any of you guys live in the country? You're probably all going, yep, that's just like out here. <laughs> all right. Um, don't forget, day after tomorrow, 
I am, well, Thursday. On Thursday. So I think this video may come out. What time is it? Eight. I'll see if I can get it out today. Today is uh, Monday. If not, then it'll come out on Tuesday. The 20... It may come out on March 1st. And then March 3rd is when I go and get my teeth done. So just, just, just keep that in mind just in case I'm not around for a couple days. Y'all have a wonderful day. Have fun today. And I'll see you later. Thanks for being here with me.